My name is Sophie Kelly, she, her. I am a student at Lyman Briggs University, and I'm a double major in both neuroscience and psychology. Um, I did this project over Marie Maynard Daly. She was the first African-American woman to receive a PhD of chemistry in the United States. I chose to do this project on her because she's been reduced to this tagline of the first woman to receive the PhD in chemistry, and nobody really talks about anything else about her. She was born in April in Queens, New York. Her father was an immigrant. Her mother was from D.C. Her dad wanted a Ph.D. in chemistry, but had to drop out because of money reasons. Um, her mother was also big into reading and helping her education. She graduated from an all-girls high school and attended a college in Queens. Uh, she graduated with honors and returned to work in a fellowship program. She earned her master's degree from New York University in 1943 and then enrolled, a, enrolled in a doctoral program at Columbia University during World War II. Uh, she, studied, uh, she studied under Dr. Mary L. Codwell. And then her life as a doctor, she studied how the body's chemicals digest food. And she officially became the first African-American woman in the United States to earn a PhD in chemistry. Um, she received grant funding in order to study how proteins are formed in the body. In chemistry, she studied a wide variety of topics, um, ranging from things like heart disease and lung disease to reactions. And then she sought a doctorate only for job security, not because she was particularly interested in it. Um, she discovered the relationship between high cholesterol and clogged arteries. Uh, and she contributed to the understanding of how diet affects the heart and the circulatory system. From here, she taught biochemistry at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine and Yeshiva University in New York. She also discovered the role of RNA in protein synthesis and determined the presence of different nitrogenous bases and nucleic acids, such as DNA and RNA, like the ACTG bases. And then she discovered some of the negative effects of chronic cigarette smoking. And that was some of the first research on that. And then she studied muscle cells and how they create energy. This is another picture of her. Some of her achievements are she supported students of color in medical programs and the sciences in general. She started a scholarship for minority students. She was inducted into the Phi Beta Kappa Society, which is America's most prestigious academic honor society, according to their own website. And then she was a fellow of the American Association for the Advancement of Science. And then she retired from Albert Einstein University in 1986. Her social impact is she was named as one of the top 50 women in science and engineering and technology by the National Technical Association. She was married, but with no children. She was an excellent gardener and musician, and she loved her dogs. Um, there are very few primary sources about Daly's life that exist. No one interviewed her while she was still alive. Um, it, there's no record of her opinions of her work or why she chose to take on certain projects. Um, and in that, she's been reduced to just her on-paper work and achievements of what we have. She has become an inspiration for record-keeping and representation of minority voices, and while she was alive, she attended conferences to raise awareness about women and minorities in STEM. And she created foundations for other scientists. She did play a major role in the foundations of what would go on to become known as uh, Watson and Crick's work with DNA. And she likely had some foundational influence on Rosalind Franklin's work as well. This quote about her, um, Dr. Marie Maynard Daly is a tangible role model for women who daydream of becoming a science giant, especially those from historically marginalized groups.